so in this video I'm going to be covering um, interviews and objective personality tests for um, assessing personality. Um, so interviews are one way that personality can be assessed um, and there are different ways that interviews can be conducted. They can either be unstructured, semi-structured or structured, structured interviews. Unstructured interviews are those in which um, there is no planned path of questioning. Um, so basically the interviewer will start with a question and kind of uh, go from there. Um, there aren't there isn't a set plan for questions. Um, this one is is not is less likely to be used for personality assessment. Um, you're more likely to see semi-structured or structured interviews used. Um, and these are ones that use specific predeter predetermined past questioning. Um, with semi-structured, um, there might be some flexibility with that. So maybe they have a set, a set set of questions, but how and when they ask that can change. Um, or maybe they have a set of specific topics and, and a, a plan for how to um, ask about those. But there are, again, some flexibility with how to ask those questions. Um, with a structured interview, um, you lose that flexibility. There, there is a set um, number of questions that have to be asked a certain way. And this is typically the kind that you'll see used when assessing personality um, because it's, it's more objective um, and you can compare um, personality traits and behaviors across individuals. If you're asking everyone the exact same types of questions, you can then compare them. If you're not doing that, if you're asking them different kinds of questions and, and wording questions in different ways, that's going to influence their answers and then you can't compare the results. Um, now, uh, one of the main advantages of using interviews is that you can gain information about a person's personality and, and behavior that you might not um, get to see through uh, a questionnaire. Um, quite often, actually, what, what psychologists will do is administer an objective questionnaire, but also then do an interview because they can gain that extra information. Um, it means they can observe behavior, body language, facial expressions, um, all of which are going to provide more information about the person's personality and how to interpret their responses. The disadvantages, number one, the big one, people can lie or they can distort information. <clears throat> this is particularly true in the case of interviews where you're either face to face or over the phone. Um, people might feel less comfortable opening up about certain things um, or they might want to seem socially desirable in, a, in some way. Um, and that's going to um, influence the answers that they provide um, and whether they are truthful or not. Um, the other issue is that the interviewer might lead responses. Um, what I mean by this is that the way the interviewer asks the questions um, or words the questions can lead the person to give a certain kind of answer. Um, and so the person's response might not really be uh, reflecting a certain aspect of their personality, it might be reflecting their response to the way the question was worded. Um, so basically, it, it, the way that the interview asks the questions can influence the type of answer that you get. Um, the other issue, sorry, I was just thinking there for a second because I don't, I should have added it on here. Um, the other issue is that there is bias in terms of how the interviewer interprets the responses. It can be subjective. If you're using a very set, structured interview where you're asking questions in a, in a certain way um, and there's a certain way of scoring responses, then it's going to be more objective. But if the if it's purely based on the interviewer's interpretation of the um, person's responses, then that's going to be more subjective and it's going to be influenced by their expectations and, and their beliefs. Um, so that can be a problem. Now, objective personality tests are 
probably the most common approach to assessing personality, um, specifically self-report inventories, which are basically questionnaires. Um, they are with, with self-report, sorry, self-report personality inventories. Um, individuals are given a standard set of questions um, that they have to answer about themselves, and these are usually either um, multiple choice or a numbered life uh, Likert scale. Um, they might be in the form of yes, no, true, false, agree, disagree. Um, the, one of the advantages to using this is that with that, uh, that kind of style of questions, it, they're very easily scored. Each, um, response, if it, uh, usually will have a number that goes with it. Um, and so there are very clear scoring instructions. And one of the things that that will do is help to increase inter-rater reliability. If you've got two different people scoring it. Hopefully you'll see that they'll score it in the same way because there are these standardized, clear scoring instructions. Um, so that's increasing reliability. Um, not all self-report inventories are valid. There are a lot online that are not measuring what they say they're measuring. Um, but in general, compared to other approaches to personality assessment, self-report inventories that are based on research and have been developed by psychologists um, tend to be more valid than, than other approaches. Um, as one example of a, a self-report inventory is the big five, which you have done um, for homework or are going to do for homework. Um, I, the other thing I wanna mention is a couple more um, advantages and disadvantages to this. So another advantage to using a self-report inventory is that people might be more likely to disclose personal information when it's either you know on paper and pencil or um, online um, than they are in a, in an interview, especially if it's anonymous. Then they're much more likely to open up about things that they otherwise wouldn't. Um, disadvantages, despite what I just said, people will still lie. Um, some responses may just be outright lies because they don't want to reveal something personal, um, or sometimes people will answer in a socially desirable way. So they're giving an answer that makes them look good. Now, <clears throat> more advanced self-report inventories actually have validity scales that help identify response biases such as lying. Um, so for example, it might include an item such as, I never get angry. Um, now, if a person says, true to that, then they're lying. Um, we wouldn't base their, their uh, whether they're lying on just that one item, there'd be multiple items like that. But the point is, we all get angry sometimes. No one can truthfully say that they never get angry. Um, so if they're saying that they don't, that might be to look uh, socially desirable, to make them look good. Um, They'll also have items that will identify whether people are actually reading the questions or just randomly answering. So for example, if a person answers true to both, um, I feel sad all the time and I never feel sad, then they're not reading the, reading the items because you can't say true to both of those. Um, so there's a lot that goes into developing good, reliable, valid self-report inventories. And I want you to be aware of that because there are so many online that are not good. Um, and so it's just something to be mindful of. Um, one last um, possible disadvantage um, is that a person's responses to self-report inventories are going to depend on their beliefs and judgments about themselves. Um, it's still considered an objective test because the scoring is objective. Um, it's identical for anyone taking the test, but an individual's responses are somewhat going, uh, go, they're gonna be subjective. Um, they rely on a person's judgments of themselves. Um, and as much as we might think we have a good understanding of our own personality and when and why we behave a certain way, um, really understanding that takes a lot of insight that not everyone has. So when you're asking these questions, um, uh, the responses you're getting are really a reflection of, a, of that individual's judgments about their personality, um, rather than necessarily capturing those personality traits objectively. Now, one um, objective self-report inventory that I want to mention is the MMPI. 
which is the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. The reason I'm mentioning this one is because this is probably the most widely used personality inventory, um, particularly um, by clinical psychologists. In research, you tend to see the big five get used a lot, um, but when working with patients and, and trying to assess personality for diagnostic purposes, the MMPI is the one that is used. Um, this was actually originally developed to specifically to assist in diagnosing um, psychological disorders. However, please note that I said to assist. It should not be used alone to diagnose disorders. You can't take a person's score on this and um, give a diagnosis just based on that, um, but you uh, can use the, the, the pattern of symptoms that you see from this to help you decide on a diagnosis, to help inform the diagnosis that you give. Now, the version that I've mentioned here, the MMPI-2, that has 567 items. There is another version that has 338, so that's slightly shorter. Um, if you happen to look it up, that you might see that one version has that many, um, so I just want to clarify that. Um, so this particular version has 567 items, so it takes a long time um, to answer all of these questions. Um, actually, when I was learning how to administer this, I was practicing on, on my husband and he had to break it up into two days because he just couldn't sit there and keep ask, answering uh, all of these questions for hours because it does take a long time. Um, it measures over... 120 scales, meaning it is assessing 120 different aspects of personality. Um, some of those scales actually are not related to personality. They are validity scales, like the ones I mentioned on the last slide, um, where they're aimed at identifying response bias or um, possible lying, um, social, uh, socially desirable responses. Um, whether they're actually reading the item. So some of those scales are, are assessing that. Um, and depending on the score for those validity scales, if it's clear that a person has um, not been given truthful answers or hasn't been reading the items, etc., then you basically have to throw out their results. They don't mean anything because they weren't um, properly answering the questions. Um, now, what I provided here, just to give you an example um, of, of what I mean by the scales, these are the clinical scales. Um, so they are 10, um, 10 scales measuring um, um, clinical features. I'm not going to go through what all of these mean, um, because I'm not going to test you on this on the exam, but if you're interested in learning more about this test, um, you can look up um, the clinical scales of the MMPI, and that will describe what each of these terms means.